Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to another video on the channel. And I think it's about time we get into the Premier League predictions for the 2022-23 season. This is obviously a yearly video, so if you could smash the support on the video, I'd highly appreciate it. And, um, yeah, it's just an opinion one, to be honest. And, um, yeah, it's what I believe the table will be looking like. And, um, yeah, stay tuned to see what I predict for the season. I also had the individual awards as always and um yeah it's always good to look back on these types of videos to see um how close I got but yeah there'll be a lot of controversial ones and as always no one ever gets it like directly right it's just one of those that um you can have a bit of fun with but yeah make sure you smash the support on the video and um, yeah, I'm buzzing for the Premier League to return. As always, I'll be working from 20th position to first position. First team we're going with is Bournemouth. I just, Scott Parker, fair play, done well to get him promoted, but I just can't see him scoring enough goals and they haven't really improved their side to the standard of the Premier League, in my opinion. Lost a few key players and um yeah, the quality is just going to be lacking for Scott Parker's side. I respect Scott Parker as a manager. He done okay with Fulham. Yeah, he got relegated towards the end, but that wasn't his fault. The job was already basically done, and Fulham were always going down. But yeah, I can't. I can't see Bournemouth even having a chance of staying up. To be honest, I think they're the team that when you look at your FPL team, you're looking for that game. Who's playing Bournemouth? In my opinion, I just. Don't fancy him to do anywhere near. And, um, yeah, lack of goals. And Parker's said that they've only got two fit centre-backs. So it kind of sums it up. And, um, yeah, I'll be very, very surprised if they don't come bottom. But let's right, move so on. So 19th position, we have gone with Fulham. And um, like Bournemouth, I think their attacking threat is going to let them down. Obviously, we know Mitrovic, 43 goals, is astonishing in the Championship. But can he bring it to the Premier League? I'm not too sure. He's had a few attempts in the Premier League where he's been there and um, failed, of course. And um, will he be able to do any damage this season? I'm not too sure. And a lot of Fulham's problems have been from their defence. Um, yeah, they conceded what their record amount, well, not the record amount, but close to the record last time they was in the Premier League. And, um, yeah, they leaked a lot of goals in the time. And that's obviously what cost them their place. But they're back up. I, I rate Marco Silva as a manager. I think he did a good, well, he did do a good job with them last season. They scored over 100 goals. Can they bring that attacking threat to the Premier League? I'm not too sure. But who knows? I think they've got more of a chance than Bournemouth. And that's why I put them 19th. But yeah, I can't see it. Unless Mitrovic goes absolutely mental. I just can't see it. And um, yeah, let's All move right, on. So for 18th position... It was a toss-up. There was a lot. There's a few teams that I had in mind, and I'll go through: Leeds, Southampton, Brentford. But th honestly, I think Everton might get relegated. I can't believe I'm saying this. Obviously, I want Frank to succeed, but I just don't think they have the right players. Losing Richarlison's massive. He was one of the reasons why they stayed in the league, and um, yeah, losing him's obviously a big, massive loss to that side, and. Everton's transfer business is the worst in the league by a country mile. Absolutely appalling. The, the names they have, so, so bad. And um, it just doesn't look like it's getting much better. Dwight McNeil, 20 million. I don't mind him as a player, but will he change my opinion on Everton getting rele not getting relegated? I don't think so. Saying that, you know what Everton are doing. They'll beat us in the first game of the season, which is obviously Saturday. And, um, yeah, shut me up. But... I can't see it. There's rumours that Calvert-Lewin's not even going to be fit for the start of the season. I just don't think it's going to be a good season for Frank side, and he could be one of the first managers um, to be sacked. So um, we'll see. But I've gone Everton 18th. Let's move on. All right, so in 17th position, I'm going with Leeds United. Um, yeah, just to escape relegation, in my opinion. And um, losing Rafinha, obviously their best player by a mile last season, is obviously going to hurt them. And, um, yeah, the only positive and the reason why I think Leeds might just do it is because of Patrick Bamford. Um, he came back into pre-season and scored on his return. So, um, yeah, it could be the reason why Leeds stay in the league, but it's going to be close. And I, I just favour maybe Ellen Road might be able to create something. And, um, yeah, but I just don't rate Jesse Marsh as a manager. 
Like he came in and he was lucky to survive really, just because Burnley just didn't do enough really at the end and they did get a big three points at Brentford. But anyways, I've, I've heard good things about a few of their signings. However, will they be able to fit into Leeds' style and um, way of playing football? I don't know, but let's see what happens. But yeah, Leeds 17th for me. Let's All move right, on. So in 16th position, I've gone with Brentford and... Um, mainly because of Ericsson loss is the reason why I think they might be in a relegation battle this season. But I just think the goals from Tony and Abuemo might just have enough to keep Brentford in the league. Um, yeah, when Ericsson came in, they was in a massive rot. Eight losses in a bounce, I believe, and it was looking bad. But Ericsson turned their fortunes around um, with some brilliant world-class performances which kept Brentford in the league. So they're very grateful for him. However, this time around, I think it's going to be a bit more difficult. There's talks they're going to get that Dams guard, another Danish attacking midfielder. So he might be the Ericsson replacement. Who knows? But yeah, I think Brentford might just have enough to survive. And I'm going for Brentford in 16th. Right, so 15th, we've gone with Nottingham Forest. And this was another side that I forgot to mention in the relegation battle. Of course, they're going to be near there. Let's not kid ourselves obviously for us had an amazing cut run and um, when steve cooper come in everyone knows history literally they were bottom of the league when he came in and he got them promoted and deservedly so they were one of the outstanding sides of the championship in steve cooper's era and um yeah a few signings to that side could add a lot however i do think the loss of jed spence could play a part in um forest fighting for their lives however I still think they've got enough quality and I really rate Steve Cooper as a manager to just do enough and finish 15th. Well, Forrest, if you offered them 17th, they're taking it, you know what I mean? But I think they've got a little bit more quality in the other sides and I think that City ground could play a massive part. Obviously, we know last season they beat Arsenal, Leicester and they could have, well, they were so close to beating Liverpool in that FA Cup game. However, they just didn't have enough. But I do believe Steve Cooper's side could do a bit and um, cause some upsets. So that would be one team to watch out for. But I'm going for Forrest to finish 15th. Let's okay, so on. next up in 14th position, we're going Southampton. And um, yeah, I'm putting them a bit higher than I thought originally. I've kind of changed my mind a bit. I just think James Ward-Prowse could be influential. Obviously, Earlier on in the transfer window, he was linked with numerous moves away, but that has never materialised. So it looks like he's staying put at Southampton. So that's a big, obviously, bonus for Southampton fans and Southampton team. Um, the worry I have for Southampton is just they go on those spells where they're just so inconsistent. Like It's so frustrating. And I can imagine Southampton fans must be so annoyed. Like... I really like Southampton as a club and a place. It's a nice one, but um, yeah, I'm going to put them full team just because of that inconsistency. And um, yeah, if Hasselhutl could sort that out, uh, they could finish a lot higher. But I think that inconsistency could hold them back a little bit this season. But yeah, full team, not a bad season. And um, they go again. Bless All right, so 13th position, I've gone with Wolverhampton Wanderers. And um, one of the main reasons why they finished high last season was because Jose Sarr, he was probably the outstanding keeper of the season. And um, yeah, he kept Wolves in many a games and he um, was an influential part of the team. So um, yeah, 13th for Wolves, yeah, they, uh, they wouldn't say no, do you know what I mean? Like, they had that time when they was obviously in Europe and they were building, but they're kind of steady and out and um, where you expect them to be, just in that lower half of the table. But yeah, 13th, um, Jimenez obviously is out for a lot of, well, the first part of the season or something I read the other day. So that is a big loss for them, but they've got goal threats and I really rate Pedro Neto. And I know a lot of people are raving about him this season, so let's see what he can do. And maybe he could get a big move. But yeah, 13 for Wolves. And um, yeah, simple as that, really. Let's okay, move so in 12th position, I've gone with Patrick Vieira's Crystal Palace. And it's one of those, it's funny, isn't it? Because I look back last season at my predictions and I put Palace to get relegated. What a plonker. Like, they had a really good season. But one of the main reasons for that was Conor Gallagher. It was very influential, especially in the first half of the season. 
he was one of the star players of the season. So, um, yeah, obviously his loss will affect them. But I just think they've, they're going to have a decent season again. Zaha, he's always going to provide for them. And it, it just never looks like he's going to get his big move away. But obviously Palace fans are delighted for that. They had a good cut run last season. We beat him in the semi-final. But, yeah... 12th for Crystal Palace, I think, a respectable finish for Vieira's side, especially obviously losing their best player from the last season. And um, yeah, a bit like Southampton and Wolves, just that inconsistency might stop them pushing up onto the table. But yeah, 12th for Palace, and um, yeah, they don't mind that. Let's okay, move so on. So 11th position, and a little bit of a surprise, I think, to many. I've gone with Brighton. I think a lot of people are putting them a lot higher and tipping them for a good season. However, obviously 11th isn't a bad season at all for a club like that. Um, Graham Potter, what a manager. I, say it, I said it a lot last season. If England had him, they would have a serious chance of winning the World Cup. And that's my honest opinion. I think he's got everything in his locker and um, yeah, he's going to succeed and get a big job in the future. There's no debate in that. But I think a few of Brighton's losses could impact them. The loss of Basum is massive. 30 million as well. That's a steal for Spurs. I'll get on to Spurs later on in the video. And obviously, the talk is that Cucurella's coming to Chelsea for 50 million. So... Two big losses, but we know Brighton, they buy well. And uh, Potter implements a style which allows players to impress. And, um, yeah, they've certainly got a few players in the locker who can do that. So, just everyone said it last season, including myself. They just lack that striker. But there's, well, this Undov guy who was really good in the Belgium League. Let's see what he can do and if he can improve put aside. And if they do get the goals... You never know, they could look at an 8th, even 7th, 6th position because they have such a good manager and a good way of playing football. But yeah, I'm going 11th for Brighton. It's all if buts and maybes, but yeah, 11th okay, for Brighton. So finishing middle of the table, I've gone with Aston Villa. And um, yeah, Steven Gerrard, he had a really good start, but it did fade away. And it's his first se well, full season to impress. And I think... This is the season where you see whether Coutinho is worth the money. Obviously, he's a permanent transfer now. And um, when I watch Villa, I just I feel like Gerard never knows his best lineup. He just he's always chopping and changing. Whether he goes with two up front with Ings and Watkins, or he plays Coutinho on the wing, or like Ings on the wing, or Watkins on the wing. He just don't, you get the gist. He doesn't know his best lineup. But if he can implement his style and get a good team going. Obviously, Villa is always a tough place to go, especially with their good fans. But, um, yeah, I'm going 10th for Villa. And um, let's see if they can get these... Because they spent a lot of money last season. Can they get these players up and running and um, prove themselves in the Premier League? Let's find out. But, yeah, okay, let's so go. Ninth position, I'm going with Leicester City. And, um, yeah, Leicester have had a weird, weird summer. They look like they're sending a lot of their best players. And... Yeah, it could tear, tear, tear them apart, should I say. Obviously, we've had the new Schmeichels leaving, but they're not signing a replacement. So they're going with uh, keepers they already have in the club, which is a bit of a strange one, in my opinion. We've heard the news at Newcastle and for Madison, and he's obviously their most creative. He's fundamental to that side. Whether he leaves or not, you don't know. But uh, Fafana links to Chelsea. And um, yeah, that Leicester side's getting torn apart a bit. So... Let's see, but I think they'll just have enough. Well, they will have enough to finish in that top 10. And um, yeah, Brendan Rodgers, should he have left after they won the FA Cup? Because that was the talk. He could have left it on a higher, but who knows? Uh, yeah, let's start to finish ninth. Let's okay, move so on. next up in eighth position, we're going with Newcastle. And I just feel that Newcastle are buying the right players. I know they had this awful lot of money, which is outrageous come into the club and um yeah they bought some good players really like that Bruno Gomez and yeah since January they've made some good moves Trippier has been a success and um yeah they haven't spent as much as I thought they would but I think they're just giving it time because they know obviously clubs are gonna charge over the odds because of how much money they have which is quite sensible from Newcastle and they had a good end to the season last year and um 
yeah, Eddie Howe, brilliant manager again, he's done it and um, a lot of people thought, oh, he'll just come in and be replaced like early doors with a big name manager, but he's proven why that hasn't been the case and he's done a really good job at Newcastle. So let's see how high they finish, but I think they'll finish eighth. Obviously a massive support, big fan base. If they can get a few more signings over the line before the start of the season, it could be a very successful season for Newcastle, but they have a good squad already to just see them into eighth. Let's move on. position, we're going West Ham United. And um, yeah, I think they they have made some, well, well, they have made some really good signings this season, especially, hope well, hoping for West Ham fans' sake, they've sorted their strike. All right, so in sixth place, we've got Man United. And um, yeah, Eric Tan Hag, his pre-season started really well, but it declined a little bit. And all this upset of Ronaldo, will Ronaldo play? It will as well has affected, and you can see a lot of uproar in that dressing room. Whether they've signed the right players, I'm not too sure. I think they're still very weak in that midfield. I know they've brought in Ericsson, but he's not the sort of player that they really needed. And um, yeah, I think Ten Hag might find it difficult. However, um, yeah, Ericsson is a good signing for them, but will it be enough to push them up the table? I'm not too sure. Can they get a few new signings over the line? And um, what will happen for Ronaldo? So a lot of unrest at United. However, obviously, Ten Hag will bring new ideas, which is what Man United desperately needed. So let's see. But I'm going sixth for Man United. Maybe a good Europa League run. Who knows? Let's move hey, on. So in fifth position, we've gone with Arsenal. And um, yeah, this was a bit of a tough one because you look at how well they have done in pre-season. They've been firing on all cylinders. And um, yeah, bought really well, like very impressive from Arsenal. I really like Gabriel Jesus, Jesus, sorry, should I say. And um, yeah, he could be a big signing for them as they desperately needed the goals, especially after Bamian fell off the boil and Lacazette wasn't doing it. So um, yeah, excuse me, Jesus could be the answer to the questions they needed up front. And um, yeah, the big thing they needed was depth because like a lot of sides in like West Ham, they were running out of steam towards the end of the season. It cost them Champions League football. But I think this season is probably looking promising for Arsenal. Will they be able to say it? We won't, we'll only be able to find out. But um, yeah, Europa League could be a platform for them. But a lot of people are topping them for top four. I don't know, but I'm going to go fifth, same as last season. But it, like United, they could have a good Europa League run because they have got a lot more depth, which was needed in the Arsenal ranks. But yeah, fifth for Arsenal. Right, Let's so move on. third and fourth was very difficult. And um, yeah, it's basically between Chelsea and Tottenham. Trying to take my non-biased point out of it. But I'm going to go Tottenham fourth. I'm gonna back, I've got to back my team and I've got to back us to finish first. So yeah, Tottenham fourth. They bought well, yes. But... Is it the players that will get them to like excel and um, push forward? I'm not too sure, but who knows? Conte, everyone who knows me knows that I love Conte. And even if he is a Spurs manager, it's tough to see because he massively, massively improved them when he came in. And I knew straight away, as soon as they got him, I knew this was a brilliant manager for Spurs. And he's, he's one manager that you look at and think he's going to bring success. Like, just the way he is. Like, I feel I fancy Spurs to win a trophy. I hope, obviously, they don't for obvious reasons. But I do believe that Conte might bring a bit of success. And if they can get Kane and Son firing like they were last season, I think they're in for a real season. However, I just think there's three teams better than them. And... um yeah, they might have a good run in like the Champions League. Who knows? Because Conte will obviously set up well and um, be hard to beat. So let's see how well Spurs do. But I think if you were a Spurs fan, I think you would be a bit excited this season because you've got a top manager. You're signing some key players. Interested by the Richarlison one, not too sure. But who knows? Yeah, good players for Spurs and let's see what happens. But full for Spurs. So in third position, going for my team, Chelsea. And... Um, yeah, a lot of people have tipped us to be outside the top four. I do still believe we get top four. However, I do worry a little bit just because where are the goals coming from? I've said it a lot and I said it a lot last season. I do worry, like, who's going to score the goals? I know we've bought well. Sterling Koulibaly, two very good signings, and we're close to a few more. We've heard the news that um, Chucky, or what, I don't want to say his name, he's coming for 20 mil. 
18 year old a lot of potential a lot of talent there so can he push into the first team who knows a lot of players still on the books but we have got a good team we had a good defense last season i know it petered out towards the end let's see what happens this season can sterling be the main man because this is his chance to thrive because he will be the main man unlike at city so let's see what happens Hopefully we're tough to beat like we was when we won the Champions League and we can do some business. But it'll be a tough season, of course it will. But we just got to be positive and hope Tuchel gets it right. And let's start with three points at Everton, please. Thank you, Chelsea. But um, yeah, fur for Chelsea. Let's right, move on. So here we have it. The winners of the Premier League 2022-23 season will be Man City. Man City are going to win it. Of course they're going to win it. Who can doubt Pep Guardiola's side with the additions they've made, in especially Erling Haaland. I know he had a bit of a stinker in the Community Shield final, but I still think he will bag. But not as well as a lot of people think. I think he might get 15, 16 Premier League goals, which I know is not too bad. But the quality of City side, they get goals from everywhere and it will be enough to win them the league. However, let me get on to Liverpool first, then I'll talk about it. So as I just said... Got Man City to win the league, Liverpool to finish second, and I think Mane will be a bigger loss than a lot of Liverpool and a lot of people in general think. I think he's a, he was a, one of their well, he was behind Salah their best player last season, and I think they will miss his goals. I know they brought in Nunes who scored at the weekend, fair enough, but I think Mane is a better player than Nunes and will well did suit Liverpool better so. Interesting to see how well they do this season, but you can't look past them finishing second. I think they'll make it close again, but the quality of Man City, you can't look past it. But um, yeah, you obviously back Liverpool to get more domestic success because of the way they have been in the last couple of seasons. So um, yeah, Liverpool second, they'll have a good season. And really, you never know if Nunes scores a lot of goals, who knows? And if Salah can be his best, who knows? But yeah, I think Man City is just that little bit better and that's been shown in the last couple of seasons. So let's move on to right, the chat. So first, I've told you boys, Man City and um, yeah, obvious reasons, they're just, they are the best side. And um, yeah, it's becoming a bit boring seeing Man City win the league every season. I know it's becoming like Bundesliga really, Bayern Munich winning it every year, but... Who knows? You never know. It's the Premier League. It's, you can never predict anything. But I just think Man City's quality is going to shine. Maybe it could be the season where Grealish actually turns up and delivers the £100 million fee. You can't look past Erlen Haaland. Even though I don't think he's going to do all that, he will score. He's going to get guaranteed 15, 16 goals at least, isn't he? which will be enough. And uh, City's defensive record was sublime last season. I think they'll carry that over. And, um, you know, they'll win the league a bit more comfortable than last season. Obviously, 2-0 down with 10 minutes to go. They managed to do it. Anything's possible. But, yeah, City will be too strong this season and, um, yeah, have enough. But the other factor is will Pep Guardiola want to, like, take the Champions League a lot, lot more. I know he's obviously taking it serious, but, like, prioritise in the big games. Like, will he rest like Haaland, for example, just for the Champions League games, who knows? Let's see. But yeah, City to win the league. Let's get into the individual. The individual awards, player of the year. There's a few players who I could see get this one. I'll run through them. The Bruins obviously a standout. Kane, Son, you can't look past them just for their goals and the way they play. Salah, obvious choice. You, you get the odd one, like you just think like Conor Gallagher last season. Will you get a player like that? Who knows? But so many you got Foden. Will Grealish do bits this season? Who knows? But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go De Bruyne. I've you got about the champions. You know De Bruyne's gonna be essential. I forgot I forgot to mention Haaland. So much quality in the Premier League nowadays. I forgot to mention Haaland. But yeah, I'm gonna have to go Kevin De Bruyne. You can't look past his goals, the amount of assists. He's gonna be teeing up Haaland every day of the week, and um, yeah, that's gonna be Haaland's dream. But yeah, Kevin De Bruyne, player of the year for me. Let's okay, move. So on. for young player of the season, there's a lot of choices, and um, yeah, I'm looking at one of the Arsenal boys. I'm gonna go outside the box a little bit. You could obviously say it's like Foden. That's an obvious choice. Trent, Reece James, but I think like someone like Bakayo Saka could be a season where if he does perform, gets in that World Cup squad for England, and could be a vital part of it. 
And um, yeah, I think it'll be one of the reasons if Arsenal have a successful season, he is their main man for a reason. So let's see what Saka can do. But I'm going to back him for um, play, well, young player of the season. So let's move on. The last one, I'm going to go with manager of the season. And it's boring to give it to the winner all the time. Guardiola, he's going to win it. But for someone like a surprise, I think you might see... For a surprise, maybe someone like Eddie Howe. I know, obviously, he had a really good back end of last season. Can he push them like, right up? Can he um, get them European football? Who knows? But, yeah, I'll go Eddie Howe, player, uh, sorry, manager of the season, even though it will be Pep. But, yeah, outside the box, let's go Eddie Howe. All right, so that concludes all 20 teams for the Premier League season. It's going to be a weird one just because of the World Cup going to be in the middle of it. But that's what I think the predictions will be. Not too many surprises, not too many shocks. However, you never know. And you never get everything right. So there could be a few different ones and um, ones you think, all oh, right, I look like a donut for putting that in there. But yeah, that concludes the league table. Done all my individual rewards, all that good stuff. And um, yeah, the next video will be up, will be the match reaction for Everton. So Fingers crossed the Blues can start the season off with three points. And I can't believe how quick it's come round. And we're back with another season. Hopefully I can get to a lot of games this season. Bring you boys content. It's always, always a laugh. Always enjoy doing it. Always look good to look back on it. And um, yeah, all that good kind of stuff. So yeah, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff. City to win the league. Fulham, Bournemouth and Everton to get relegated. But until the next one. Up the chills and um, yeah, have a good one.